How's it going everyone? It's Kai Darts here and for this video I thought I'd make a quick tutorial to show you guys how I approach texturing a darker skin toned character in Substance Painter whether it be for video game development or animation. Now I haven't seen too many videos on the subject matter so I thought I'd make a quick video to show you guys how I approach it and if you guys find this useful please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. Alright guys so to begin I'm gonna add the first undertone so I'm gonna go to the materials and I'm going to scroll to the bottom to where I see this plastic mat here. And I'm going to drag and drop. And the color I usually want to go for for a darker skin tone person is uh, like a beige color. And we're going to be adjusting these as we go. So just keep that in mind. So get a beige color here. And this beige color will act as one of the undertones. We'll just name that as undertone 1. All right, guys, so what we'll do now is go over to the layer section. We're going to add another layer, and we're going to rename this to Global Adjustment. And this is a good thing to have um, good naming conventions so you don't get confused later on. And we're going to go over here where it says Normal. We're going to double-click, scroll down once to it says uh, Path Through. And I'm going to right-click on this layer and go to uh, Add Filter. In the Property section, I'm going to select filter, scroll down to where I see HSL perspective. So what I like to do for darker skin tones is a hue of one, saturation I'll do like 0 0.4, and I'll do 0 0.3, and this should give me like a mucky brown. All right guys, so what we're gonna now do is create a new folder. So go to the icon in the layer section, and we're gonna drag all the layers underneath inside this folder. Close it up and we're going to name this base color. All right, now we can start adding some variation to this skin. So what we'll now do is add another layer, double click and let's change this to red. Change it from normal to pass through. Let's right click on this layer, go to add filter and we're going to add another HSL here. And the color we want to go for is like a red, maroon, burgundy type of color. So we just up this hue a bit and up the saturation. And what we'll now do is go back up to this red layer. We're going to right click and add a black mask. And once we've done with that, we're going to right click, go down to fill, add a fill. And in the properties section, click that grayscale, and we're going to add a cloud to it. And what that does is break up the red. And we want to change the scaling on that because that's off scale. So we'll just scroll up, and where it says projection, UV projection, we're going to go to triplanar. And now we can get a 3D representation of it, and we can use the global scale to adjust it as we see fit. And once we're satisfied, you can go back up. And then where it says 100 for the opacity, you can lower that down. I lowered mine to about 91, but you guys can do it as you see fit. And for the next layer, we're going to be adding a fill layer. We're going to right click, add a black mask. Then right click once more, add a fill. And we're going to grab another cloud. And I think I'll go for cloud 3 on this one to switch it up a bit from normal to pass through and change the opacity down to about say 17 is fine for now okay and before we get too far ahead of ourselves let's activate the subsurface scattering and shadows right now so we're gonna go up to the upper right hand corner we're gonna go to display settings and we're going to check on shadows and if the shadow opacity is low, just uh, put it at 100. We're going to scroll down to uh, activate the subsurface scattering. So check that on. Up that sample count. Go to your texture set settings. And where it says channels, hit that plus sign. And you're going to see a sign that says either uh, subsurface scattering or scattering. And you're going to want to click that. I already clicked it, um, so I, I'm not going to see it. But to see it on the actual um, 
character here. We're going to go to materials and we're going to use that same plastic mat. We're going to drag and drop it. And over here in the properties, we're going to disable everything except for scattering. So let's turn scattering on. And we're going to up that all the way up to where it looks like a waxy doll. Can you see that? Now that's just too much. So we're going to we're going to adjust these. All right, guys. So the first step into lowering some of the subsurface scattering is I'm going to just add a fill layer. And I'm going to disable everything except for scattering. And I'll make this something about 0 0.029. And that's subtle enough where it's not overwhelming. And it's still kind of off, but I think we'll do fine for the tutorial. Now I'm going to go back down to the undertone in the base color folder. And I'm going to see if I can get just a darker value. Since we added that subsurface scatter and made it a bit lighter, so we'll just bring this down a bit. Close this up. And let's start adding some variation, like some highlights and uh, some dark areas, some shadows. So what I'll do is create another layer. And I'll just name this uh, Dark Areas. <laughs> So I'll go to brushes and I'll grab some this dirt brush. I'll go down to the base color and I'll make it something a little darker than the actual skin. And I'll just go around uh, where the folds are and I'll just, actually I'll turn on the symmetry really quick <laughs> so I don't have to do twice the work. What we'll do from this point is change the opacity. And we'll make another layer. We'll grab uh, a lighter tone. We'll change the opacity for this as well. Make it about 32 should be fine. And let's do one more. So we'll, we'll make this highlights. We'll do one more. And we'll, we'll get a red brush for this one. Let's name this red lights. Now, since we're done with that, let's start adding some micro detail. Let's add some uh, surface imperfections, um, blemishes, scratches, scars, all that good stuff. Let's add another layer. Let's go with uh, old scars first. So for this one, all we want is height and normal. And for the height, we'll bring it down. We'll bring it down to about uh, negative 0 0.4. And then go to alphas. And let's turn off symmetry. Okay, we're done with the scars, so let's add a layer of pores. We might go back to the scars um, later on, but let's just get straight to pores. 
And for pores, I want the the height to be uh, all the way down. And turn the height the opposite direction. And we'll bring it up just a little bit, about 0 0.4. All right, while still on the pour layer, we're gonna go to spray in the alpha section. Let's just get some uh, imperfections going on. All right, guys, we pretty much wrapped up this part of the series. Hopefully, you guys found it useful, helped you guys out. And uh, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, and share. And if you're wondering why the chin looks like that, uh, that's only one part of this entire little file that I created in uh, ZBrush. And if you want to experiment or if you're just wondering what HDRI I'm using, I'm using Glazed uh, Patio. But another good one is Autumn Forest. And this just goes to show you that the lighting is 50% of the character. So whatever you can't push out in texturing, you can push out in lighting. You know, just keep that in mind. And part two, we'll be covering dirt, grime. Um, I didn't even cover lips in here. Um, so that's another one that will be covered. Also sweat. So things like this. You know, I will be covering all that in part two. So share, like, subscribe.